The first 15 years of the 20th century saw changes in the theory and practice of art among modern artists in Western Europe, which were so remarkable they've been compared with the great advances made in science and technology at the same time. There's no simple explanation for why this period was so dynamic, nor was the dynamism confined to one centre. Although Paris had long been the focus of modernism, it had its rivals in Brussels, Barcelona and Munich. But it was a time of growing tension in Western culture, of continued rapid industrialization, of imperialism abroad and rivalry within the states of Europe, and at the same time, scientific breakthroughs, which not only questioned our way of seeing the world, but the very nature of reality itself. Planck's quantum theory, Einstein's theory of relativity, Freud's work on psychoanalysis. It was in 1900 that Freud wrote his interpretation of dreams, a prophetic work in view of the tragedies of modern Western history. And Freud wrote that book and published it here in Vienna. Vienna 1900 was one of the intellectual and artistic centers of Europe. And in tracing the emergence of modern art in the 20th century, Vienna embodies perhaps more than any other city the struggle to break with the ossified traditions of the 19th century to achieve a modern art, an art for the 20th century. Turn of the century Vienna was a prosperous and technologically advanced society, peaceful and secure. The center of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, ruled over for more than 50 years by the last of the Habsburgs, Emperor Franz Josef. Franz Josef symbolized permanence and stability. He cultivated a status quo based on a bureaucracy and state censorship, which exerted a virtual stranglehold on the cultural imagination of the capital. Artistic life was dominated by the Baroque history painting of the Fine Arts Academy. Architectural endeavor aimed at creating a sense of continuity with a grand past. The town hall, late Gothic. The Hofburg Theater, high Baroque. The parliament buildings, classical Greek. Against this background, artists and architects across Europe sought new ways of looking new forms of building that would embody the idealism and progress of the new age. In Vienna, these hopes found expression in this building, the Viennese Secession Building, designed by Josef Maria Olbrich in 1898. In its simplicity and its distinctive ornamental dome, it's an early attempt at modern architecture. The building housed a group of artists and architects who, in 1897, seceded or broke away from the Reactionary Academy of Fine Arts to form their own organization, the Secession. And surprisingly, the Emperor Franz Joseph himself opened the first exhibition here, and elements of the notoriously conservative Viennese bourgeoisie were quick to buy from the exhibitors and to commission its architects. But at heart, it remained an anti-academic organization. One of the founder members of the secession was the architect Otto Wagner, and his design for the Postal Savings Bank of Vienna confidently transports the principles of the secessionists into the 20th century. It's a classical building, but there's no vain glory, no false monumentality. The use of materials takes pride of place. The newest, including aluminium, combined with the oldest, including marble, to produce a result startling in its modernity, given its date of 1904. But most of all, it was the secessionist painters and their successors, first Klimt, then Schiller and Kokoschka, who possessed the power most effectively to disrupt the conservative values of Viennese society. In 1902, for the 14th Secessionist Exhibition, 
Gustav Klimt, the most important of the secessionist painters, painted this frieze-like work in homage to one of the great figures of the 19th century, Beethoven. The Beethoven frieze is concerned with the highest ideals of art. It portrays the conflict between the human desire for happiness, love, and fulfillment set against the fact of evil, corruption, death, and even the terrors of the unconscious. It portrays the achievement of pure joy through poetic and artistic creation, and it culminates in a final embrace between man and woman, a kiss for the whole world. The modernity of the Beethoven frieze lies less in the novelty of its ornamental extravagance than in its capacity to shock through its sexual explicitness. Klimt, like other artists of the secession, was partly reacting against the stultifying conservatism of turn-of-the-century Vienna. It was a stagnant society, opposed to change, hidebound by class distinction and strict moral codes. In these circumstances, the erotic power of Klimt's work caused an outcry. Klimt's essentially harmonious, idealistic view of beauty has a 19th century flavor. A more distinctly 20th century modernism arose in Vienna with a younger generation, especially Egon Schiele. Schiele, like Klimt, believed there was a spiritual dimension to sexual ecstasy, but his was a brutally direct approach to sex. His depictions of the female nude are projections of male sexual feeling, and given they were painted in the first decade of this century, unprecedented in their license and intensity. Schiele was also deeply obsessed with the self, again, a very modern preoccupation. He saw man as a sexual being tormented by a sense of spiritual despair, and he thought human existence without meaning, a continual striving doomed to frustration. Schiele's willingness to confront himself and his world directly however disturbing, is at the core of modern art, found not only in Vienna, but especially in Germany, in Expressionism. <laughs> 